editor-in-chief and founder and CEO of gamification.co. It's Gabe Zickerman. Gabe? Hey, everybody. Thank you Gabe. so much. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it's so exciting to be here and hear all of you talk about um, all these exciting new technological innovations, all these different ideas that folks are putting forward that are especially compelling um, for the subject of uh, changing the world. I have a long personal history of being interested in improving the environment. I did cool stuff when I was a kid. Um, I try to keep doing cool stuff now. But the thing that I'm struck by is that I feel like, and I don't know if you guys ever feel like this, that we have a little bit of a last mile problem here. I hear lots of amazing ideas. I hear astonishing technological concepts. But what isn't being addressed in the way that I think many of us, and many of us uh, feel this probably as well, is that many of our good ideas end up amounting to nothing if we can't convince consumers, users, employees, customers, the world, to take the actions that we need them to take. And some of these grand ideas don't require that. But at, at some point, we're going to need people to be able to do that. And so, set against this backdrop, I feel like we have what eventually, essentially amounts to an engagement crisis, which is we have really important things to say. And sometimes we try to say them so intensely that we end up being shrill. Shrill. We have really important things to say, but people are not listening to the things that we say the same way that they used to. The world of engaging with people and communicating with them has changed. And so just to put this into context how intensely this is true, Nielsen put out a report that said in the last 30 days, four-fifths of the American population has watched broadcast entertainment with a second or third screen open at the same time. 22 minutes, we can't focus on one thing. Remember when TV was the distraction? And now we need a distraction from the distraction just to feel like our brains are engaged for that period of time? Or to make this more concrete, not that long ago, one of the world's largest automakers came to me and said, Gabe, we have a problem. And I'm like, cool, I like problems. What's your problem? And they said, hey, it turns out kids don't want to drive anymore. For the first time since the introduction of the automobile, the American teenager wants to drive less than their parents. And they were freaking out. And they said, I know, it's a great thing. It's an amazing thing. And they were freaking out. And, and I said, well, why is that? And they said, well, you know, all the usual millennial stuff. Uh, they don't want to spend money. They care about the environment. Cool. But also, apparently, they're getting the message about texting and driving, so they're choosing not to drive. <laughs> True story. If you had told me five years ago that Instagram would have killed the car, I would have laughed you out of the room. But the unintended consequences, and the important thing for us all to understand, is that this new consumer is subject to a different kind of rule set than what we think. People following their bliss, following their emotional energy where it leads them, are fully prepared to upend any behavior, no matter how entrenched, no matter how many generations their family's been doing it, no matter how core it is to their culture, it doesn't matter. Everything is on the table if you can connect with the consumer in the right way. Any behavior is on the table. And at the core of getting that kind of engagement are games. Games are actually the activities that have produced this rewired brain, this new kind of consumer, this new idea. And the concept that allows us to level this playing field is called gamification. And what it means, many of you, I'm sure you've all heard the term, and it has a different meaning to many of you. What it means is it's about using the best ideas from games, loyalty programs, and behavioral economics to engage people and change their behavior. The best ideas from those three disciplines. It's not just about throwing some badges up on a kind of crappy website, which is a very common manifestation of gamification and probably what many of you think of, badges. Now, badges are important and meaningful. They matter. And if you've ever been in scouting or your kids have been in scouting or you've been in the military or know someone who's been in the military, you'll know that badges are important and meaningful when they're important and meaningful. But by themselves, they don't create a system of changing behavior. The second thing, and this is one that gets people a lot, especially well-intentioned people, happens to me all the time, Folks come to me and they say, Gabe, I know what, we want to change behavior, we want our employees to use less power, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our green training program and make it into an Angry Bird style clone. Because that will convey the message that we want to convey. And because everybody likes Angry Birds, if we just put our kind of message into the form of a game package, that will work, right? Because that'll be better than what we're doing now. Because that's better than watching slides or reading a book. And the truth is, the right answer is almost never to make a game out of it or put a game on it or pickle it. 
or whatever mode you want to use. It's almost never about making the thing into an explicit game. It's about taking the best ideas from games and applying those to the challenge. So briefly, who am I? And I want to share some examples with you. I'm the author of three books on the subject of gamification. My latest is called The Gamification Revolution, just came out a couple months ago. Talks about how companies are using gamification to change behavior, beat the competition. I run a consultancy called Dopamine. We help companies do this kind of stuff. And a conference series called G Summit. You can find out more um, about these events that we do. But more importantly, there's a whole bunch of videos on this website for some of the examples I'm going to share with you today. And those of you who are around at 145, come to my uh, longer form session. We're going to talk about this issue in greater depth. Uh, various people who've done cool gamification stuff, their videos are up on this website, so you can check it out. At the core of what makes uh, engagement work, what allows us to connect with the consumer and change their behavior are what we call the three Fs, which stand for feedback, friends, and fun. The more of these three Fs are in a system, the more engaging it becomes and the better off we, the better are uh, we at changing their behavior using the system. So an example I thought I'd share with you that some of you have probably heard of that's a very, very good example of changing behavior is called speed camera lottery. So in uh, Sweden, as in many of the Nordic countries, the ticket that you get for speeding at a speed camera is not based on how fast you're going, but it's based on how much money you make. True story. So in fact, two years ago, Sweden gave out a $150,000 speeding ticket, uh, which I'm sure was the president of Ikea or a uh, band member of ABBA or Bjorn Borg or someone like that. Nina Cherry, if you're a child of the 90s. Um, so set against this backdrop, a guy named Kevin Richardson was asked to reimagine the speeding camera. And here's how speed camera lottery works. Instead of you driving by the speeding camera above the speed limit, getting your picture taken, ah, ticket in the mail, anyone who drives by the speeding camera at or below the limit is automatically entered into a lottery to split the proceeds of the people who speed. Right? OK, cool, right? So everybody passing the, passing the speeding camera gets an opportunity to win if they comply with the law. Which model of behavior change do you think works better? Model A, we trust you. You're a good member of society. You know what to do. You know what the rules are. You're a good employee. You know how to do what you're supposed to do. You'll do the right thing, won't you? But we're watching. And if you break the rules, we are going to fuck up your life. <laughs> or Slow, drip-wise, positive social reinforcement for a job well done each and every time, every single time, and a punishment if you don't comply. Huh? Any of you have kids or dogs? You'll know that option B is a better option. It's a better option. And with technology, with gamification, it's possible to make it happen. Let me tell you how much better. Speeding at the point of intervention here reduced by 20 kilometers per hour just by doing this, by doing speed camera lottery. The best speeding intervention in the history of humanity. This, so we're all on the same page. The US has raised and lowered the speed limit three times in the last 40 years. It had absolutely no effect on people's speed, as an example. Or put it into a different context, a more corporate context, Domino's has this game called Pizza Hero, some of you might know, that you can play on, your, on the iPad. It shows you how to make a pizza. So you play a pizza yolo. You get the dough, you make the dough, you knead the dough, you throw it up. Eh. You get the pizza sauce, you put the ingredients on it, and you flick your finger, and within minutes, it's baked at your local Domino's and delivered right to your house. The pizza you just learned how to make. A million dollars in incremental revenue per week to Domino's from this application, cutting down on the other modes of interaction, but also generating incremental revenue. And most interestingly, if you're especially good at making pizza, Domino's will invite you to apply for a job directly from the game. Now, what's interesting about this, and a good lesson for all of us, is that a lot of what the millennial generation craves, what this new consumer craves, is to understand how the sausage is made. They want to peek behind the curtain. They want you to show them how to do the thing. They're interested in doing the thing. They'd like to learn that. And in keeping with that, Autodesk, which makes great 3D modeling software many of you are familiar with, they wanted to raise the usage of their trial software. So they took a page from where in the world is Carmen Sandiego and added it to their trial 3D modeling software. So you can download a free trial every time there's a big 3D movie. Everyone gets really excited. Yeah, cars, I'm going to be a 3D modeler. And people go and they download this software. And they very quickly realize it's actually kind of hard to do 3D modeling. So Autodesk was like, well, maybe we can show people why using this thing is actually a good thing. And then maybe they'll buy more products and be more engaged with us. So when you download their software as part of this trial, 
and you actually become a secret agent on a hunt and you're given a clue and in order to unlock each clue as you travel around the world, you have to learn a basic element of 3D modeling. Make an object, rotate the object, light the object, bounce it, set it on fire, and each time you do that, you travel around and you get a clue and eventually you solve the puzzle. This raised the total amount of time that Autodesk users used the trial version of the software by 40% and raised total revenue by 17%, this intervention. Think about applying that to your customers or your employees in getting them to take training because that's what they did. This is training on their software, on their complicated software. Unlocked in this way, very exciting stuff. Um, and last but not least, I'm out of time, but Folded is a great example of using games to help solve really complicated math and science problems. Uh, using a game, players manage to unlock a 15-year-old puzzle in the fight against HIV in about 10 days by playing this game and definitely worth checking out and a really fascinating talk from G Summit. So I, I just wanna leave you with this one sort of parting thought, which is everything that we're doing to change the world, everything that we're doing to improve the impact of, of companies and society on the world, reduce energy consumption, develop new technology to help transform everything, are all, syn are all very synergistic with the direction that the millennial generation in particular is going. This is all aligned with the next generation of consumers and employees. They want what it is that you are doing. But in order to fully close that loop, in order to really get to the magical place that we all wanna get to, reduce footprint, zero footprint, fundamental changes in the world, we're gonna to need to change their behavior. And luckily, gamification provides us with a method for doing that. Thank you. Thank you so much.